Hello and welcome back to the latest episode of Beyond the Panels. Uh, because March is Women's History Month, I decided to pick a few titles, uh, a few nonfiction graphic titles pertaining to women's history. A lot of them are autobiographical, but some are just pure nonfiction. And some of them aren't even comics, but uh, some of my comics, well, some of my not comics are actually here in the graphics collection if they pertain to comics or the history of comics, pop culture, things like that. Um, so this is a perfect example. This one is the Supergirls, fashion, feminism, fantasy, and the history of comic book heroines. So just a pure scholarly book that um, takes a look at the history of um, fictional superheroes as they change with the decades, with um, the socio-political climates, things like that. So it talks about how like in the 40s essentially um, female characters were relegated to like the girlfriend. So you had like Lois Lane, um, all of Bruce Wayne's various ladies, like um, the original Batwoman, um, Kathy Kane, and then it goes through like in the 60s where it brings in some of the teen youth characters like Supergirl, like uh, Wonder Girl, and then um, it goes into the 70s with um, all the women's liberation movement, um, the awful decision to take away Wonder Woman's powers uh, and give her a pantsuit and let her learn judo, which was super weird. And then it goes into like the darker themes of the 80s. Um, and it goes, um, this was published right around 2009. So it has stuff from the start of the millennium, but not like the last decade or so. But this is a really interesting read if you're interested in the uh, evolution of female characters in um, the comic book universe from both Marvel, DC, and some of the outlier publishers. And just like Supergirls was about um, fictional female characters, this one is uh, She Changed Comics, and it is about all the women uh, creators in comics from throughout the decades, from the 40s till today. And uh, both writers, editors, artists. Um, it's pretty interesting. So there's lots of indie people as well as uh, really well-known people that you might recognize. So this is a good little uh, snippet if you were interested in maybe learning about more female creators. You could read their little biographies and then see what we have of theirs in the collection. And then this was actually published by the CBLDF, which is the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund, which helps to fight um, censorship in comics because that still is a big problem. My next one is the Black Dahlia who is probably more famous, well much more famous in death than she was in life. This is part of a treasury of uh, murder that Rick Gary has done. I believe I've spoken about some of these murder books before but this one is about one of the uh, Probably one of the most famous unexplained murders in um, in California, and it goes over essentially why the Black Dahlia came to California, how she tried to get into Hollywood, um, how she got her nickname, um, all the studios she was associated with, and then the strange circumstances surrounding her death. Um, and I thought this would be an interesting one to highlight because there have been so many different documentaries um, lately about the Cecil Hotel. And this happens to be uh, one of the final places that she was seen before her untimely death. So this is a really interesting murder mystery, uh, true crime story. My next one is actually a um, French comic book that was translated into English a few years ago. It's called California Dreaming, and it is all about Cass Elliot, who was uh, one of the singers of the Mamas and the Papas. 
which was um, a really popular band that actually only lasted right around three years before they broke up, but they were wildly su successful while they were active. And this is all about her life growing up, um, how she tried to get into Broadway but kept losing out to more popular rising stars and just sort of happened into the band and um, how dysfunctional and successful the band was and all her trials and tribulations. So if you're interested in music history or just um, foreign comics, nonfiction in general, this is a really neat one. My next one is Kid Gloves by Lucy Neasley. Um, honestly, I just grabbed the first one I saw because there are a million Lucy Neasley ones. Um, this one is uh, chronolo uh, chronicalizing her pregnancy. Her latest one is actually um, about the birth of her child and what it's like being a new parent. It's called Go to Sleep, I Miss You. Um, her first book is Relish, which is like an autobiographical travelogue, and she's done numerous travelogues. But she is a cartoonist that writes a lot about travel, writes a lot about food, and her own life. So we have around six or seven of her books in the system. But this is um, one of the more popular ones that, uh, like I said, it's called Kid Gloves, Nine Months of Careful Chaos. So it's all about her pregnancy and how she dealt with it with her family, with her husband, with her work schedule. So these are really awesome. My next one is also autobiographical. This is Persepolis, which is um, one of those comic staples. I'm sure you've probably heard of Persepolis. Um, it's two books. This one happens to be the complete one, so it's the entire arc together. But it is all about the author's life growing up in uh, Tehran, right around the time of the Islamic Re Revolution. And then it also talks about uh, her studying abroad in Vienna and then coming back to Iran and um, then years later moving uh, to France as sort of a self-imposed exile. So this was um, a really interesting uh, story that um, is definitely a must read if you're into nonfiction comics, if you're into, you know, um, perspectives from other countries, what life is like in other countries. Then my final one today is another biography. Um, this one is called Calling Dr. Laura, and it's a graphic memoir uh, by Nicole Georges. And it is all about this, um, the author and how she, when, as she was growing up, she was always told that her father was dead. And years later, she visited like a psychic on a goof. And uh, the psychic told her that although the person she thought was her father was dead, her real father was alive and well. And it really threw her for a loop. Um, and but she was like, oh, that's what the psychic says. You know, that's kind of weird. Um, but then a few years after that, she finally found out that the psychic was actually right, and her family was lying to her this entire time, and it was this huge sort of conspiracy to cover it up for her. Um, so it's all about her sort of dealing with a family of secrets, um, and it's interwoven with, like, um, her growing up, the trials and tribulations, um, her love of animals, it guest stars, her pet chicken. And uh, the title of the book derives from, with all the stress going on and finding out that, you know, her mother lied to her, uh, she called in to advice uh, for the Dr. Laura Lessinger uh, Colin show, which was really popular back in the 80s and 90s, and she was a very... Uh, outspoken, conservative, abrasive, uh, sort of talk show host. Um, and so she decided to get advice from her and uh, interesting stuff ensues. But um, we actually have two of her uh, books in the system, Calling Dr. Laura is the first one, and then uh, the second one is Fetch, How a Bad Dog Brought Me Home, which is another just awesome, beautiful read, but uh, it will make you ugly cry. But if you love animals, it's 
it's definitely a really sweet story. Um, so those are my picks for this week. I hope you found some new interesting reads. As always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's something you'd like me to talk about, and I will see you guys next time.